How's it going? I am back, and this is the new career world. So, I don't think the update really does much for me. <laughs> Having had a look at it this morning, it looks like a kind of a meh update. You know, not much really going on. If we have a look at the map, I'm down to $20,000. And so I was thinking this is a good opportunity to probably build a new starter boat, but I see a crate over there. The other thing I could do is build a car and just go hoon around the desert and see if I can find some crates because now I'm getting all the crate spawns in the desert. Another easy $10,000. <laughs> There could be more crates just f like sitting around out here. Another option could be build a train and grab some of these containers. I don't know if I could build anything really meaningful for $30,000. So I'm starting at FJ Warner. There's oh, a bit of a bit of islands kind of around here that I could go and look for crates at. You might also have noticed this little red spot here. This is the um, Sal Salago racetrack that replaces this island. So if I can get over there, I could build a race car and hoon around that track, which is something I'd like to have a go at. And what's important to find right now is the refinery island, which looks like it's, uh, where is it? Way over here. Okay, great. It's uh, immensely far away. So, I think I should build a starter boat. I've been thinking about this. How can you make the preset tutorial boat better? How can you make a better version of this? So, this costs... It says it costs 17000 Yeah. So, can I make a boat of this size for less than $17,000 um, and have it perform better while basically providing all the same functionality. So yeah, I'll, I'll build this, but better. Um, and my main gripe with this boat is this gap here. The player does not fit down a one wide block gap. And so it should be too wide on both sides for you to be able to run around the edge. The way you can get around that is you can either cut out a piece like this. So that you can actually like scurry around the edge there or you just make the whole boat two blocks wider which is what i'm gonna do so to begin i'm gonna make sure i'm on the same grid i want to be on the main grid and then i'm going to kind of just figure out what the overall dimensions are right so i've got this very ugly frame up here this specifies the width of the tutorial boat and then the space from this frame, the big frames, is sort of the deck area, the main working area of the boat. And then the little overhang piece here is where the outboard motors hang off. Now if I measure this out, it's 41 blocks long, which means it's nowhere near the ISO container standard size, which is 29. It's like a container in a bit, you know. So the first thing I really need to do is make this wider because, um, and so this, I need to probably actually make my frame around the exterior so I know what I'm building inside. So if I go like this, hold on, let's make it in red or something, some kind of color I won't use. So it has to fit within this pink, pink box. Um, the like mast and the driver's helm and basically all the like, any decorative kind of usable piece doesn't have to fit in this. This is just going to be for the main kind of boat area, including the outboard. So I'm going to bring up a pink notch onto here as well. So I really need to fit within this front space. And then the rear space is only going to be for the outboards to sit in. So I think I'll just build it with the tutorial boat below, and then we can kind of compare them as I'm going through it. So first I'll start with the kind of the hull shape. Um, I think I'm going to do a bit of a steeper hull. But this kind of like rib curvy outside piece is what I'm going to do. So yeah, I'll get to it.
Okay, so this is what I've got. My hull is very similar in terms of like actual size. Um, I think I'm fitting. I think everything's the same really. So this the height of the inflatable part. Usually I make this too high so that you can fit a second ladder because you need two ladders stacked together to be able to look at either of them. Press F to get the ladder prompt to pop up. Um, if it's like two ladders split apart then you can still look at it but you're obviously making it a harder target to connect with if it's like that you can still grab onto those and you'll be climbing the ladder but you're um, creating the spot in the middle where you can't interact with anything to grab on and I think for a boat of this size uh, and the intended player like a new person who's never played Stormworks before and a small boat that's probably going to be in quite choppy seas, so um, floating around, bobbing around a lot. I think having the biggest flat area target that you can just go, that's a ladder, and press F to grab onto is sort of the best um, solution for that. I don't really mind. Maybe there could be something like this that maybe extends back into it or something. But... I think it's, a, it's one of those things, like I would rather have it be highly usable than look a certain way. But realistically, just having it wedge off here is fine. It's going to be in the water, so you're not really going to notice it. The front of the tutorial boat on the bow is a 1x2 wedge, and it's very, it's a shallow slope. Um, I think that looks really strange on this kind of boat. So I've done a very sharp wedge slope very steep wedge and then I've kind of ended up smoothing it out and getting this round shape I don't know if ribs are really like that or if that would work in a boat I just think it looks kind of cool um, and it works really well for getting all the wedges in to kind of poke out the front and have it all match up and everything again it's going to be underwater so you're not even going to know it's there but if I really had to I could get rid of this and like steepen it up at the front there but in actual fact, um, the standard 45 degree wedge has the best drag performance. All the other wedges actually are just like hitting the water with a block or even hitting the wind with just a square block. So having the bow mostly this shaped rather than this, this longer slope um, should give it better performance in general. I've also put the helm in the same kind of place and I'll build out a little thing on here and I think I'll do the mast in the same place. The engines, outboards can go in the same place. It's all much the same kind of design. The only real difference or the only thing to consider, I guess, the tutorial boat's only got two block space here so you can see there's controllers in the floor and these engines even are the floor. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, tricks to get around the height restrictions, I suppose. So I've done the same thing. I've only got two blocks of height for space in here, which is totally fine for a modular engine. I can make that fit in here, no problems. Along with, I can use all the same tricks of putting microcontrollers in the floor and everything like that. Yeah, so I think I'll do like this little bridge area where you pile it from. I'm going to transplant this boat into a new file because if we look at the merge tool, we're working on the green grid, which is not the main grid. And I don't want to be screwing around later trying to figure out what's wrong with my boat when I know something's wrong with it right now. So now we're on the main grid and I'm going to bring the tutorial boat in here. I'm just going to put it back over here. So let's get a window, window and a little steering position. That took way longer than I thought it was going to take. 
So about this um, helm that they've got here, uh, let me get rid of some of these things. So on the left here, you've got radio channels, then a speaker and a microphone. The thing is no one really uses the radios in Stormworks. The quality is pretty bad. And I would say the functionality is kind of weird as well. So I'm opting to just not have that. I don't think it's important for a new player to even have access to a radio because like it, it's just not used. Um, if it is used and I'm wrong, let me know, but I think it's not used. Up here, we've got a buzzer, which I think is used for the transponder and probably this light here as well. The buzzer can be hidden and you'll still hear it. There's no containment of sound in different rooms. So even if you put it in the sealed area behind the helm, the sound will still come out of the helm, no problem. And it could even go down lower or in the side or somewhere. It doesn't need to be up where you're looking, where you would be better off having a button or something like that. The key on top, I think it's stupid because you turn it on once and then you forget about it until you need to turn it off. Having the lever up where you can see it would make way more sense because that's your throttle control and you want to know what your throttle's at most of the time. I think the window's fine. There's not much we can do about Stormworks windows. But I think I'd try and keep this exact layout. Um, I'm, yeah, I've tried pretty hard to keep the exact same window. The equipment on here, this looks like it has just been chucked in. Random crap. None of this is important for a career game. Um, a compass is kind of useful, but generally not. If you've lost your vehicle and you're relying on the handheld compass, you're pretty much screwed. If you're swimming, <laughs> I don't even know if you can look at the compass if you're swimming, so kind of, ugh, I don't know why you'd have it. The RC controller, um, totally useless, especially on this boat. There's no RC for this boat, so having it here is just stupid. The flashlight and the binoculars you already have, so having backups is kind of good. I don't think it's worth having extras on this boat, and I don't think putting it here is a good place to put it. Same with the night vision. Um... It's good to have, not a good place to put it. All the stuff like defib, the first aid kit, that's good. The welder's good. All this in the middle, flares, transponders, and a radio. The flares are highly optional. The transponder and the radio, totally useless. Wouldn't have them. So, with that in mind, I've done a little bit of trickery, and I might even move some stuff around. You know what? I've just realized I can put an equipment slot here. Where's the small equipment? The one thing that always screws me over is that my flashlight goes flat. So by having an equipment slot right there where you're always going to see it, as soon as you get in your boat, you're going to see it, you can put your flashlight in there to recharge it. So in the middle, I've got a dial, tell you your speed of your vehicle. This light here I'm going to use probably as a reverse indicator because um, that's something that in my mind, I always want to see a visual thing that I'm definitely in reverse in case my boat is not going backwards, but I'm in reverse, then I know something's wrong. Up here, I'll be able to put all the switches for lights and things. I've moved the key over to the other side just because it's like an empty spot that I had. And I've put the lever somewhere you can really see it. And if you look on the tutorial boat, it's got these big things, the big blocks coming out the side of the helm. I think that's kind of useless, probably gets in the way more than anything. But I've tried to keep that idea, so I've put in little wedges. They won't be as in the way, but they still kind of hold that idea. And then because of all this, the window has to rotate down. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I am no stranger to crazy folding mechanics. So this will fold down on spawn, the hard point will lock it in place, and that's that. Everything will work fine. I've removed two of the indicators here, or the um, instruments because the window frame will kind of cover some of them up, but you should still be able to access these two for something. So that's kind of, you know, useful. The compass ball will rotate down and be visible from here. I did have it in here before, but I need this spot for the hard point to spawn in. And then the equipment. So on the tutorial boat, you've got your hoses and your cable, or hose and cable at the back. Um, and then it's got one rope and a winch up the front and you'll notice there's all these rope anchors all over the boat but you only get one rope seems kind of silly and having the seats on the very side is a kind of a military style of rib i suppose where you see the guys hanging off the sides with their guns 
probably not a good idea for a search and rescue kind of boat. So I've put the seats a little bit more in the, the sort of frame of the hull, somewhere where it's easy to access. From playing a lot of career, I know that you want an easy run to the front and you want to be able to access all your seats kind of in the same place because you're going to be chucking people in, in and out of those seats all the time. And then to kind of double up on the space by putting a wedge below the seat, I've put in two ropes. And so I've gained like double use from the, spa the space that the seats would take up. And I've also gained heaps more ropes. So four ropes instead of one is really good. Down the back, I've put two more ropes just in case. And you've got your hose and your cable. And I put the hose here because I'm going to put the fuel anchor on this side. And I might as well put the electrical anchor on the other side. The fuel anchor should probably go on the left because most of the docks have their refueling on the left. Some of them are on the right, but the beginner one is on the left at least. So for the starting boat, having it on the left, it's all kind of, you know, it's in the same place you're looking. This is my replacement for all that messy equipment hanging off the front. So it's a bit hard to show you how this works right now, but this hatch, you would open it and directly below it, you have access to one of the full equipment slots. And I find that diving gear is something that's really important for a career gameplay. If you want to jump in the water and swim down and find some treasure, you basically need the diving gear. The scuba gear will work, but it's not really going to cut it for most situations. Then uh, I'll just cut out the floor, I suppose. Over on the side, on both sides, you've got more equipment slots. So I usually put all this sort of repair and, yeah, basically just the repair equipment on one side. So underwater welder, fire extinguisher, and a normal welder. That's something that's missing off the tutorial boat is the underwater welder. And if you've got a boat and it's in the water and it's damaged, chances are you're going to need the underwater welder at some point. So having it on here is just sort of, it's a no brainer. On the other side, we've got the defib and three first aids. I don't know what I could put in this slot. I could put a flare gun and some ammo. I might do that, but it's sort of like, it doesn't really matter. It's just an empty spot. And so what happens here is when you open that hatch, you get access to the first diving gear directly below. If you press one of these buttons, that side is going to slide over that. And so you press the left button, you're going to have access to the defib and the three first aids. If you then press the right button, it's all going to slide across and you're going to have access to the repair tools. And then if you press the um, arrow button on the right here again, it's going to go back and you'll have access to the diving gear again. So this just gives you a lot of equipment in a very small access point. You know, you don't have to um, have it all sort of blobbed out. Because the hatch is a manual hatch, you'll always be able to open this to weld up any tracks or anything that's gone wrong in here. You do lose access to these things if you lose electricity, and that might be something to consider but generally if you've lost electricity you're really screwed up and there is a breaker on this and two batteries which means there's a backup battery so i'll just do the same on here if there's a backup battery you'll be able to restore power and then gain access to those tools if you need to do repairs so that's not really an issue the next thing on this boat is the winch at the front doesn't make any sense in my opinion because you want to winch so that you can tow someone else. And you don't want to tow people from the front, especially with a boat where you've got this kind of slope. Because you're just going to nose into the water and your propellers are going to come out. And you're just not going to be able to do it. What you want is the winch at the back. And <laughs> I know that maybe there's not enough space. But you, you would be able to get a winch in the back here and it would totally be fine. And especially now that this boat is wider than the tutorial boat, even a winch just sitting here like this is 100 times better. It's easy to access. You'll be able to tow things and you'll be able to drive forwards while towing something. Up the front, I think if you did want that kind of flat, flattened off thing, that's totally usable for something, but I don't really know what you're going to be doing up the front there. Maybe if you put some rails or something so you can just jump up here and have a look around, get a bit of a higher vantage point, that might be useful. But yeah, I don't know. I think I'd rather just have it more space for standing around and coming up and looking at things. 
So yeah, I'll move on to the mast and the outboards and the winch and get all that connected up on the back. Okay, so I think I've gone a bit overboard here, to be honest. I've got my outboard motors, which are actually essentially the same as the original ones. Um, I kind of looked at them and then started building my own ones. And then I came back to look at them and realized they're actually very, very similar. And then for the mast, I decided I was just going to go all in on the crazy pivoting systems. Something that was really successful on one of my previous ribs is using this port here this is the fuel manifold and it goes through a block basically and then connects to a pivot and so this whole mask can tilt back a little bit and giving that, that little bit of an angle makes it look really cool and then the top part in here with the light for the mast rotates down as well so you should be able to see only the two colored lights from the rear but the white and the colored from the front um, I haven't put a light on the front because I don't think there's supposed to be a light on the front of a boat. It might be on a small boat and that's easy to replace, but there is the spotlights. I've also got deck lights and I've moved the heater into the central part of the boat because there's not going to be any real difference where you are standing on this boat. So putting it in the center is just kind of like it's out of the way and it makes a bit of sense. So you can see my money. I'm at 656. So... I'm not sure where I've spent all my money and it could have just not refunded me very smartly because the editor sometimes does that. Exit and come back and see what my money's like. See, now my money's 56. <laughs> okay, back up to 30 and back down to 56. So I guess I'm not winning on the cost front here. Let me get rid of this, and then we'll be able to see exactly how much I'm spending. So, at this point, I'm pretty much even with that starter boat. It's interesting to know that the starter boat, while it performs pretty badly, is still actually a pretty good value for what you get. I think something like this, while it's not too different, it should perform a lot better. And there's a lot of things like, I bet the equipment costs a lot. Yep, diving gear, 2000. So it would be good to just like replace that with an empty slot and then you can just fill it with whatever you find along the way. Yeah, there's lots of little things are adding up. Like all of these lights are RGB lights and that's just because I like to have a very good amount of control. You have so much control over what color the light is with an RGB light versus just playing around with the old paint and a normal light. And you can also change these lights on the fly, which is just so good, super useful. Every instrument panel on here is $200. So, you know, I could easily get rid of some of those and then save some money. I also have like five more ropes than the tutorial boat. So, I mean, ropes probably don't cost too much. 200 you know five of them that's a thousand dollars more but i think it's all kind of worth it um and i'm going to keep doing this i'm going to put a modular engine in the back here and then it'll be ready for testing um i've also on the mast i've left this little spot open here and that's for a radio antenna so if you do decide later on you want to put an antenna on it's just a nice spot for it to go on the transponder, the beacon locator, is something that I think you actually need when you're starting career, so that will be included. But now for a modular engine, this will be interesting because it has to fit within a too high space, but luckily we can make that fit pretty easily.
So I've just finished all the engine assembly and I've cut it out and copied it so I can show you a bit easier what's going on under there. So being that it's only too high, we're going to get three banks of cylinders. I've gone with a six long crankshaft and that is because the engines, the small prefab engines, they're three long so you would really only get in within two of those spaces. I think it's only fair that I use six crankshafts to get the same sort of volume, volume of engine. I've got two exhaust pipes here and these come up into the floor and then they feed into the hinge which will exhaust out through the top here on the outboard motors. And then the clutch from the motor comes through a gearbox which we've got a one to three gear ratio, then a reverse gear and then that goes into the back and then goes up into the same hinge so the hinge is transferring the power and the exhaust fluids, which is totally fine for them to share those things. They're going into the same, into the correct ports and they're coming out of the correct ports. So that's all good. We've got two fluid pumps, one in, one out, and they are doing the coolant. Just seawater cooling. Nice and simple. Air manifold, which will come up and I'm going to have it poke out the top here. This is probably the highest on the boat that I can get without running into issues. And it's a pretty clear shot straight down and then across a little bit. So that would be fine. The fuel manifold goes into the starter system. Now, I'm a fan of doing this because I don't like how the alternators work. They don't generate enough electricity for all the systems that I like to run on my builds. So this thing here, we've got a generator that is geared up one to three and then a starter motor or an electric motor that runs the starter system. To replicate this or to exchange the belt drive starter, all you really have to do is convert your starter signal into a number one signal. And then you engage this clutch and this motor, and that will run until you reach two RPS, which is when your starter motor would stop anyway. And then that whole system just engages. And then the same number that you would put on your alternator, which would be probably number one to engage that, you can just send to the clutch and then that will engage this generator, except I'm generating way more electricity off this one small generator here. And so we're sending power through these pipes and then fuel is also going out and then going down and it pokes into the floor here and then runs up to the front. And then I've put two of the medium fuel tanks in here. I would have liked to get one of the really large ones in here, but obviously too high. The only other option is to build a custom tank and I don't think it would really give me much more fuel, but it would give me more weight. So I've opted for this and I can just add two tanks together. And that's still, I think, a good enough solution. This engine should be pretty efficient. So I don't think I'm going to run out of fuel anytime, really. The other thing I've added is I've got a hatch here. This is a not electric, non-powered one. And that's so you can at least get some of the engine. If any of the engine gets damaged, you can at least sort of get at it a little bit and repair it. There's no way you can really get down here for anything else with the cramped space. So my only other advice is don't crash the boat. So now I think I can start organizing what lights I want to have up here on the dash. So now all I really have to do is all the remaining logic and then paint it. Okay, so I think I've got most of my logic done. It's actually not too bad. It looks a bit like there's maybe someone spewed up a lot of logic blocks on the deck, but really there's actually not much going on here. So now the trick is to put all of this stuff in the floor somewhere. If you put it in the very bottom, then you know, you're probably likely to run into some like run the ground and then damage something there. So what I want to do is find somewhere in the front where I can put it. I need to flip it up the other way. And the good thing is that this actually increases the amount of buoyancy in the boat. It basically turns all the solid blocks into wedges. And so you get about half your buoyancy back per block. Also doing this does make it a bit easier to repair these. If any of them get damaged, 
technically they are the deck. So they're just right there ready to be repaired. Ooh, okay, so a bit of paint and we'll be done. Now I want to try and make it look very similar to the tutorial boat. So I've got to make sure we put the black where the black is and the orange where the orange is. I don't like the color of the deck though. I like using this um, weird green color for my deck. Okay, so the only things I've realized I've forgotten is a way to do the steering and um, a way to help with my pitch control. Um, I also need to connect this reverse gear up. I've got all the fins down here. So I've got two fins on each prop. They'll do my roll control. And then I've got one in the middle, which will do the pitch control. There's also some fins under here, which will help with steering. And I think quick and dirty probably has all the logic I need. You know, another thing I forgot, there's nowhere to refuel this boat at the moment. <laughs> So probably the easiest thing to do is just put a hose somewhere. I've got the hose down the back, but the tanks are up the front now. So it probably makes sense to put the hose in somewhere like here. And then I can replace one of these ropes with a hose. And while I'm here, do the same on the other side and give you a way to recharge it. So we're pretty much done. I think what I want to do now though is a little bit of cleanup. See if I can find any pockets where I can definitely delete some things. So I just noticed before in here, some of these blocks where I was putting pipes could be replaced with the normal pipe rather than the enclosed pipe like this one. So a normal pipe gives you back your volume. Um, I'm not sure if it really works for air, but I know it works for diesel, so I don't see why it wouldn't work for air. So if there's a spot there, there must be a spot on the other side. So it's only a little bit, but I am getting back some of the buoyancy. What you can do as well along these sort of areas is use wedges instead of solid blocks. So that's a wedge, but that's a solid block all the way along here. So a wedge like this closes the space, but gives you half your buoyancy back for each of those blocks because you're getting back half the space. And then the same for here. So I can come all the way back to where the ropes are and then go up to the lights. get some of that extra buoyancy. If you wanted to go really hardcore, you could replace the entire deck and the entire floor with microcontrollers or even wedges. It's a little bit extreme, but it would work. And probably the same with here. I can put in wedges, more wedges. As long as I'm not deleting anything, any controls or anything. The only areas I actually want to keep sealed would be above this um, sliding thing. I'm trying to keep that as its own cavity. And I need to check on the other side that this section isn't part of uh, where the pipes were. Which it looks like it's not. So I think finally I can hook up all my electricity. And then hopefully that's good to spawn. Here we go, it floats. We're off to a good start. The uh, mast is going the wrong way. Let's fix that. The mast, negative two. I need to move these two microcontrollers as well. I can actually just cut them and rotate them, I think, put them in here, because there's nothing behind there really important. 
nothing that it's going to delete anyway. You can see it's suffering a little bit in the front. So to fix that, let's do some abuse. What we want to get is some pivots, any kind of pivot. And we're just going to put a couple of pivots in here. Oh, I forgot. I'm not in creative. Okay, so let's see. Nothing works. Why does nothing work? Why does this not work? Oh, it's very difficult to get the key from this spot, actually. Uh, I've got no third person, which sucks. So my engine is on. It's just running very quietly. This button, we've got deck lights, so they are red. Off. We should have white and hopefully another white. Yeah, brighter white. This hatch here is actually kind of annoying. I didn't realize it would suck me in like that. And then we have nav lights. Um, I need to probably rotate that mast a little bit. But they look like they're all on. We're getting the battery is actually showing the fuel and the fuel is showing the battery the temps are fine the engine is fine the compass ball we've got speed we've got a spot for flashlight we've got reset we can hit both these buttons for the lever turn on the transponder which is beeping because i think did a mission just spawn search the area and locate the emergency <laughs> that's lucky got the heater which uh needs to be a toggle button spotlights which might be connected they are connected just uh i need to turn those controls onto a reset and the buzzer sound isn't hooked up to any sound that works with the transponder so let's take this back and quickly do some changes Well, I've been troubleshooting this boat for quite a while now. I can't figure out why I don't have any steering ability. This is set up essentially the same as quick and dirty, but it's just, it won't turn. It might be because there's low power output, but then I don't know why there's low power output because the engine runs and the engine's fine. And they've got different controllers so the quick and dirty boat's got the ze controller on it and the tutorial boat that i've been making has a mixture of um the afr controller and my logic on it and this is the same controller i'm using in my truck and it works so it runs an engine fine and it runs an engine with enough power to be able to actually do things. I'm honestly at a real loss for why that engine controller doesn't work for this particular kind of boat. And why something like Quick and Dirty, that is literally made Quick and Dirty, can perform so much better. Um, so Quick and Dirty has the same problem. The beeps that you're hearing are just the standard sound on the buzzer. This has been bugged for a while. You have to use um, a sound from after the audio update. So changing it to a car horn or just the horn sound, anything up in the, in the top half of the sounds should work. Except a lot of those sounds are like sirens and very screechy sounds. So you kind of are locked into using the horns.
Now the problem I'm seeing here, uh, where is the closest hospital? I think way over here. Or back at the fishing village. Hospital boats out on the other side. I'm just going to take them back to FJ Warner and put them in the building for now. Maybe tomorrow I'll finish out the Mongo. Or maybe I'll just put them in one of my trucks and go for a drive over to the hospital. Come on, where are you going, man? Don't go into the propellers. <laughs> <laughs> he's, oh, he's done it. You idiot. He didn't even take any damage. Or very minimal. So, where is that building? I'm going to chuck them in that building for now. We'll just leave them there for now. And... Try and figure out how to get them to a hospital tomorrow. <laughs> well, so I think the lesson of today is that as much fun as it is to bag on about the tutorial boat being not a good boat, it is actually quite difficult to build a good boat in this kind of size um, for the money. So about $17,000. This boat costs about... Probably a little bit less. It probably costs fifteen to fourteen thousand um, dollars. Wait, I can just check. What am I saying? No, it costs seventeen thousand dollars. It costs essentially exactly the same as the tutorial boat. I would say it looks a bit nicer, but for whatever reason, the steering doesn't work. And that's something I'll try and figure it out. I'll get some help from some other people and some input and see if there's anything weird going on there. But it looks a bit nicer. It's more well equipped, I would say. It's got more space. It's about the same size. And the functionality is a bit more compressed into the dash here. I think I would rather have this tutorial boat if the engine was powerful and the steering worked. But because they don't, it's kind of a piece of crap right now. So yeah, anyway, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.